I live in a red state. And so when I posted that last video a couple days ago about correcting my algorithm and sharing some of my beliefs, I truly expected to be unfollowed more than followed. And I think that speaks leaps and bounds to the experience that we probably all have or have shared if you've grown up in a red state or you've been different of any kind. Um, you've been one of these marginalized groups. So I, I have felt the biggest hug from all of you and I wanted to say thank you. And I hope everyone that's commented and has received additional followers from this community just by posting on my video, I hope you're feeling it too. With that said, I wanted to share one of my experiences that I had um, with one of the topics that I shared my beliefs about, and that is abortion. Growing up, even in that small community in Iowa that was super red, I always said that I was pro-choice when we would have these debates. Um, and that was pretty darn progressive for that area. But I would always caveat it and say, but I would never have one. And oh, how naive I was. I was naive because I didn't understand all of the scenarios that could lead to a woman choosing to have an abortion. But I very unfortunately quickly learned one of those scenarios. Back in 2019, I uh, was pregnant for the first time after trying since 2016 when we got married. Um, so about three years worth of trying to, to be pregnant. It was the first time that I had successfully gotten pregnant. Um, And um, everything was going well. I heard her heartbeat. I actually had one of those devices that you can have at home and you can listen to the heartbeat at, at, at any time. Um, I was so excited to be, become a mom. And I know that my husband, Adam, was so excited to become a dad as well. At our 20 week ultrasound, um, I went in and we, we did the ultrasound like normal. Um, first pregnancy, I really don't know what I am looking at personally. Um, and then I went back to the exam room and then I waited over an hour before anyone would come and see me. And <laughs> when you're waiting that long for an hour, you, you're really thinking, oh, it's either really backed up or ooh, there, there must be something wrong. And unfortunately for me, something was very wrong. I found out that our baby at 20 weeks had a very severe case of spina bifida. Um, spina bifida is when your uh, spinal tube doesn't fully close around your spinal cord and when that is exposed to air once the baby is born, um, typically you're going to see a lot of um, paralyzation depending upon where that opening is on the spinal cord. So if it's a little bit lower, you might get luckier and it might just be lower calves, ankles, that type of thing. Um, the higher you go, go up, the higher it goes up in your body um, in terms of impact. So um, you could have full leg paralyzation, you could have um, bowel paralyzation. Even in some instances, it could travel up to your chest and your arms. Um, and unfortunately, our daughter's was pretty high up. In addition, she had, um, she had a lot of fluid on her brain and her head was a lemon shaped, which indicated that um, there was a pretty good chance that she was going to have mental disabilities as well. Um, I went and saw specialists very quickly that following week, had so many discussions and I asked for all of the research. I wanted to see the, the, the facts, the stats, show me the stats, show me the probabilities of what her life is going to look like. and based upon all of that research, and I, I might add that I have a master's degree um, in healthcare administration, specifically focused towards healthcare ethics. And as, as part of that education, I had a lot of training on how to read research articles and um, medical journals and all, all the sort. And so I had, at least I had an advantage in being able to read through those very quickly and understand or attempted to understand what I was reading. Um, based on the guidance that I received from our doctors, based upon what they foresaw her quality of life to be, and in no way did they try to guide me towards any decision, but based upon, sorry, my recording cut out. But based upon the guidance that we received from our doctor, we made the impossible decision to terminate our pregnancy. Now, we decided to travel to Illinois, which was about a five hour drive from our house because that was the only location or the closest location 
that could get us in within a time frame that legally we needed to have the termination occur by. Had we waited even one to two more weeks, uh, I think we could have only had this done within three different states at the time, um, Colorado being the closest, and it would have cost around $10,000 at that point. Um, and I might add that insurance does not cover abortion care. And so everything that you have to pay for in terms of the procedure is completely out of pocket. So we traveled to Illinois and this occurred at an abortion clinic. And um, I had to walk through uh, protesters in order to get to the clinic's front doors. And um, they were shouting various things. And one of them shouted to my husband and said, hey dad, Think about all of the sports that your son or daughter is going to play someday. Think about all those good memories that you'll have with them. And I was just thinking as we were walking in, like, if you only knew what was going on with our daughter. Um, we, we wouldn't ever have those hopes for her. Um, it would be lucky that she would understand what was going on at the time. But that was... A very far off chance based upon all the research that we had done based upon the location this was on her back based upon the fluid on her brain and, and other things so we continued to walk in and i don't necessarily want to go into all of those details today i can in the future because i think it, it can help um us talking about the quality of care with the procedure that's being done the different steps that you need to go through while you're at the clinic i think that's really important information to know so maybe in the future i will share that type of information but today I just want to say thank you to all of those clinic workers and the doctors that go in because they are truly risking their lives every day. It's, it's not uncommon, unfortunately, that harm is done to those workers. And they were there and they were compassionate towards me and my situation and to every woman's situation that was there the, the two days that I was there. I'm sharing this not because I want additional followers out of this. I'm sharing this because this is truly a topic that needs education. And I felt really alone when it was me. And I want any women out there that are going through this or that might go through this in the future to know that you're not alone. I want them to know that there's an army of people out here that are supporting them, if not just virtually. And we can provide that mental support to them. In addition, if you are going through this, I had a support group online that really helped me. It was various women throughout the world that were going through similar experiences with termination of their pregnancies. And there were specific groups for late term abortions as well. I don't want to share that group information publicly out here, but please, if, if you need that information, please DM me. I'm happy to provide it. I just want to make sure that that spot remains a safe space for everyone that needs it. I want to say thank you again to everyone that has jumped on and followed me recently. It's really made me feel that I'm not alone in this world with some of my beliefs, especially when I'm living in a red state and those beliefs are not shared very often.